Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Tacoma Cyclist. I am the Tacoma Cyclist, and with me as always is my trusty sidekick, the Boogeyman. Today we've been presented with an opportunity. We had a race we were headed to this morning. The Boogeyman was going to be doing a time trial, and I was going to be doing a road race. But because of snow and ice on the course, the race has been canceled. So we're actually going to show you what it is that we would normally take on a race day, since the car is already all loaded up for a race. Now, in particular today, we're going to be talking about uh, cold and wet races, although some of this stuff you can tell whether we would take it on a cold and wet race and whether we wouldn't. Uh, so this is kind of our bring everything kit for a one day race. So we're going to start uh, with the real basics. Now, the Boogeyman and I have a uh, kind of a rhyme that we talk through every single time we go to a race or a ride or anything for that matter, and that is Garmin gloves, glasses, helmet, shoes. We figure if we have those three th or those five things, Garmin gloves, glasses, helmet, shoes, then we can get through just about any ride. So as long as we're packing up and we have our holding in our hands, our garments, our gloves, our glasses, our helmets, and our shoes, then we are good to go. Of course, the boogeyman's wearing his glasses, and we don't use a garment anymore. We use the Wahoos because we like those a lot better, but we can still use the term Garmin gloves, glasses, helmet, shoes, and that works just great. So in this case, the boogeyman is using a kit brick. Uh, the kit brick actually helps him to organize things quite well, and you can just toss all that stuff in there, and we're good to go. Uh, of course, it wouldn't be a race if you weren't wearing your team kit and stand up the boogeyman here. Uh, boogeyman is modeling our new team kit and his team numbers or our race numbers, which are well pinned on here. Uh, that will give him the opportunity when he stretches out to make sure that these numbers get nice and straight. Go ahead and stretch out for us, boogeyman. Great. So those numbers can be nice and straight. will be picked up by the camera. Notice they're oriented correctly here. Go ahead and take a seat again, boogeyman. Now, in both cases, the boogeyman and I brought uh, a change of clothes, and I mean a full change of clothes, yeah. Undies, socks, jeans, and a nice warm sweatshirt. It's about 33 degrees out here today, uh, which is why we had to cancel the race, or why the race was canceled. It was because it was 33 degrees, uh, there was ice and snow on the course, so <clears throat> race was canceled. Having a nice set of dry clothes, though, when you get back to the car, uh, is, is wonderful. Uh, it gives you the opportunity to, to get warm and dry, but if you don't have towels to dry off after a wet race, uh, you could put on dry clothes and you're just gonna re-wet re -wet them again. So uh, bring some towels, bring a couple nice warm towels for yourself and you won't regret it. So we always have a couple towels in the car. Uh, we also have a hand towel in the car. I always keep this in the car. Uh, you never know when you're going to need it. Hand towels are great for drying off your face while you're uh, um, uh, on the trainer and you want to uh, maybe dry off some sweat even on a warm day. Just having a nice golf towel, hand towel handy is great. And we also like to keep a blanket in the car too. Um, it is a real, very real thing that you can suffer hypothermia while you're on a cold race. So having ways to warm up uh, are always beneficial. So again, these are things that we like to think of on cold or wet races. Even on dry, warm races, we like to have a fresh change of clothes. Print out your USAC uh, approval to ride before you show up, and if you have a license, bring it with you too. There's, uh, there's usually a line, and if you have that pre-filled out, you've already got it signed, you can just walk straight to the line, hand it to them, and you're checked in. If you have to do all that paperwork when you get there, it's kind of a pain, and you kind of annoy people around you. So on to uh, some of the technical bits. Actually, before I get to the technical bits, I want to show you one really cool thing other than breaking his wheels. Uh, this is a portable pop-up tent. I'm not gonna show you it in use because it's kind of a pain uh, unless you're actually needing to use it. But what this does, uh, you unzip it, you pop it out, and you throw it up, and it literally stands up to a six foot tall tent uh, that's wide enough for one person, and you can hop in there and change. So if you're being modest, you don't wanna flash the entire uh, race uh, crew, you can toss this up in a parking lot, and hop inside, change your clothes, hop back out. Uh, bring this to a race and you will be friends with all of your teammates. So there's a couple other things in here that we like to uh, bring on every race. Of course, an extra set of wheels. Now the Boogeyman and I only ever bring usually one extra set of wheels. Uh, this is set up with Junior's gearing. Worst comes to worst, I do have tools to change out the cassettes. I can always swap out a cassette if I need to use the wheels myself, or I can just roll with Junior's gearing and spin out if we get going really fast. So we've got his extra set of wheels here, and uh, behind me, 
well, obviously a bike pump too. I do keep an extra bike pump here as well as one in the shop. Uh, they're the same exact bike pump and they read within one or two uh, PSI uh, of the same readings on the tires. So I feel confident that if I pump it up at home or pump it up on the road, it's the same uh, pressure. I haven't always found that to be the case. Sometimes uh, tire pressures can vary on bike pumps. Uh, I like to carry a backpack. In this case, uh, I like to toss some nutrition supplements in there, maybe some bonk breakers, any additional clothes, like these are my uh, shoe covers. Uh, I've got a beanie, all of these things, again, for wet and cold races. Uh, frame numbers, bringing these along with you, as well as your frame number holders. And then a beanie for post-ride, because, well, you're gonna have helmet hair, so why not have something to cover that up with and, and look stylish while you're doing it? <clears throat> a couple other things I like to have on a ride. Of course, a bottle. Uh, in this case, we are using Scratch Labs Nutritional Supplement, uh, which I guess we're just gonna drink today since we're not using it while we're racing. Um, a toolbox, and I'll bust that out in just a moment. Of course, a trainer. Uh, this will help you get warmed up. We take the uh, powered trainers on dry rides where we know it's gonna be a dry race. Uh, the nice thing about those Tax Bushido uh, smart trainers is that they can be powered by you. You don't have to have a, uh, a power outlet. But uh, when you don't wanna mess with electricity and water at the same time, <coughs> excuse me, a nice dumb trainer does the trick just fine. And this Elite trainer is fantastic for that. Um, some tool bottles, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, some tool bottles. These are great. Uh, if you're doing some on the course warm ups, you can take these with you. And if you happen to have a puncture or whatever, you have access to your tools. If you want to get a little bit crazy while you're racing, you can pull out all but the bare essentials. Maybe, uh, you know, a, a couple CO2s or, or a CO2 and a, uh, uh, a patch. And you can have a nice lightweight uh, toolkit, which is great for uh, like a 40 or 50 mile road race. You don't want to get stranded out in the middle of nowhere. If you get stuck and there's no follow car behind you and you have a flat, you don't want to have to try to walk that back in. So I do, even on road races, uh, particularly on road races, especially longer ones, I will still take some tools with me just in case. Uh, again, some necessities while you're uh, warming up. Kind of goes without saying, TP. Uh, yeah, I mean, everybody goes, right? So if you're gonna have to go and you have to use the porta potties, why not bring some comfort with you? Again, having this will make you best friends with everybody on your team, so take some of that with you. Uh, I love to have some shop towels. These things are like duct tape. They have endless levels of use. I've used them as markers for wheels that go in the pit. You write your name on it, stick it in the spokes. Uh, you can you know, wipe yourself down with it in place of a hand towel. Uh, clean off your drivetrain, any number of things. Uh, these are very, very useful. And then, of course, like I said, the toolkit. And if the boogeyman wants to reach behind him there, there's a couple things in that cup holder that I like to bring along with me. Yep, go ahead and grab those. All right. So I've got last season's numbers, and there are some safety pins in here. Uh, this is great if you need uh, if you need a spare number, or you forgot to bring yours or whatever, you can always flip this over, use a Sharpie to write on it, and you've got yourself an extra set of numbers should you need it. Lube, uh, this is good and frozen right now. Uh, like I said, it's cold out here, but uh, I always keep an extra bottle of lube. You never know when you're just gonna need it. And again, sometimes your teammates might need it too. Uh, this is a dry lube. I wouldn't use it in wet weather like this, but it works great for summer rides. Uh, I do carry a wet lube for me otherwise. And then wet ones, wet wipes, whatever you wanna use, baby wipes. Uh, these are great for, you know, you have a, a tough ride, you wanna be able to clean up a little bit. You don't have access to showers. At a minimum, you can wipe yourself down with some of these and get yourself relatively clean. And again, these are kinda of like those shop towels in that they've got a thousand uses. You can wipe down some nastiness off your bike if you want to. You can wipe down your face, your hands, uh, anything you need to with these as well. So I just like to keep those in the extra cup holders. And you can see I've got plenty of room back here. Uh, the boogeyman was quite upset by this, but I used to have a WRX uh, hatchback, which was a fun car, absolutely a blast to drive, and absolutely a blast to be a passenger in too, but it really wasn't uh, very good for taking things along with you when you ride, because there wasn't a whole lot of extra space. By the time you put another person in there or all of your kit, it just, it filled up. So we went with a, a larger SUV. It'll give us the option to put a trailer-mounted tow hitch on it and plenty of space in the back for any and all of this stuff. 
Uh, there's still plenty of room. Should I need to maybe do a stage race and I need to bring extras of these things, or maybe I need to bring an extra set of wheels if we're racing in the same race, uh, there's plenty of room. So I, I do think that um, going with a larger vehicle like this uh, is quite beneficial for us. Plus it puts the bikes behind us instead of on the roof and we uh, have some really bad windstorms here in Washington so uh, you know I, I always got a little bit worried when I'd see the, the bike swaying on top of a roof. I just felt like there was going to be some damage there. So uh, this is this is our kit. This is what we travel with. I'm going to open up the toolbox here in just a second and show you what it is we carry with our with for our tools. Uh, we don't take the whole kitchen sink. We just bring the necessities but we do have things in here that will uh, work for just about any situation. Okay, so this is my trusty toolkit that we take on the road with us pretty much everywhere we go. Now, of course, there's plenty of room in here, so if I need to add tools or take them out based on what I think the race is going to need, I will absolutely do that. But taking a look at the top here first, uh, what you can see here is I've got a couple uh, spoke wrenches in different sizes in case I have any problems uh, with wheels. Uh, I also have some small screws and nuts or button nuts and bolts here. That's for our frame number holders. So we can put uh, frame numbers on and off as we need them. On this side, I have an extra Garmin mount just in case you need one. And I've, uh, I can modify that so it'll fit the Wahoo as well. In the top here, I have an extra cassette. Never know when you're gonna need it. Frame number holder. These are ones that we've had made. Uh, I made those on a 3D printer. Uh, and I've got an assortment of uh, wrenches and wire cutters, or pliers and wire cutters. Uh, they just, they can come in handy, uh, and I've got them in different sizes. Sometimes you need, especially when I'm putting on frame numbers, for example, to hold both sides of the bolt. So uh, they come in handy. And like I said, I've got some wire snips here as well. I've got a few extra spokes, just in case. Although if I need these, I may as well just bust out the uh, spare set of wheels. But you never know when you're gonna need something like that. So I do have them here just in case. Uh, extra carbon brake pads and extra aluminum brake pads. Uh, frame numbers. And again, these are my old ones, but I can always modify these should I need to. Uh, this is kind of a makeshift one in the first place. Uh, speaking of makeshift, you know, some old uh, mounts for bike stuff. Uh, you can turn these into frame number holders. More, more pliers. A, at least one rubber glove. I actually usually keep a couple uh, rubber gloves in here because you never know when you're gonna need uh, to do this, but you don't wanna get your hands all gross or maybe your hands are even cold. And in a pinch, this will actually work under a set of cycling gloves anyway to add a little layer of um, water protection as well. So if, you're, if your gloves aren't waterproof, that will also help. Uh, a couple assorted uh, different sizes of Allen keys. Notice I don't have a multi-tool in here and that's because it's in my other tool set uh, that goes around with me. So I have a, a couple multi-tools that work well uh, that I keep in those tool bottles. A trainer, uh, a trainer uh, quick release. This is great. Uh, we don't usually roll with trainer quick releases on our race bikes, uh, but when we're warming up, you definitely need to put one of these on. So I keep one of these in the truck also, but in here. Uh, and again, you'll be the friend of your team if you have one of these and somebody needs it. Uh, so moving down a little bit, uh, this is the only tool I didn't describe. Moving down uh, in this toolkit, I do have all of the tools necessary, <laughs> including a hell of a pipe wrench here, to uh, replace cassettes. And again, since the boogeyman and I share wheels sometimes, it's nice to be able to swap cassettes in the field uh, because his is a junior's gearing and mine is not. Uh, we do need to be able to switch, uh, switch cassettes. So we have all the tools for that, and uh, we have the uh, a little cassette holder just in case. And of course, that one's not on it right now, but that's quite all right. Uh, I've got some spare tubes here. This one's been patched before. Uh, these are brand new. So I've got several spare tubes. You can never have enough. And then uh, I've got some CO2 cartridges as well. Uh, they're in there just because, I mean, let's face it, I've got a pump in the car, so I shouldn't need a CO2 cartridge, but they're there just in case I'm uh, uh, out and about and I want to toss one or two in the, uh, in the canister with me. Uh, yet another spare tube. You can never have too many of these. Uh, we, for the most part, roll with deep section wheels, so I go with ones that have a very long uh, stem on them. Uh, and then the last tool that I want to point out, this is actually a BOA tool. Uh, again, you don't want to be caught out with a uh, bow or ratchet system that's not working and not have the tool because this is kind of an oddly shaped, it's a little tiny Torx bit. So having this BOA tool is uh, very beneficial. I just keep one of those here in the toolkit. And again, if somebody needs it and you have it, you're going to be their hero. So uh, definitely worth having. 
So there you have it. That's, that's what's in our toolkit. And again, it can change based on the needs of the race, but this is typically what goes out with us on most races. Okay, thanks everybody for uh, for joining us today. Uh, we were able to salvage the day. We wanted to get out and race, but uh, as you can tell, I've got a little bit of a chest cold, which probably wouldn't have been great anyway. And uh, I think the boogeyman was ready to race, but you know, delaying it a, a week or two isn't gonna kill us. Uh, so we're, we're glad we were able to salvage this and turn it into a video for you. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. And of course, as usual, go ahead and like us, uh, you know, give us a thumbs up, share, and as always, subscribe. Thanks.